Welcome to Xanadu Gallery's Red Dot Podcast. I'm Jason Horsch, owner of Xanadu Gallery, publisher of Red Dot Blog, and your host for the podcast. Today, I'll answer the question, what should I paint? Uh, And actually, I could change that to what should I create, because obviously we're talking about a variety of media here. Uh, But but, uh, that's kind of how the question came in. The the, uh, question that I'm going to be answering today was a comment that was in response to my podcast last week. You'll remember we talked about supply and demand and pricing. And I shared some stories about some experiences that uh, I've had recently uh, selling artists' work and how their pricing and supply and demand issues kind of interplayed with one another. And one of the comments in response to that podcast came from Jeff. And Jeff asked, I'd like to know what are the intangibles that are driving the sales of this artist who sells everything? What's the subject matter? What size, medium, style? What story are the paintings telling? Is the artist's personal story part of what drives the sales? What do the buyers usually say the art makes them feel? And uh, perhaps in the next podcast, you could be more about how to find the markets where an artist might be received with open wallets. So it's a uh, great follow-up question to the conversation that we had. And, and, and again, just as a little bit of a reminder on that conversation, I shared a story about an artist that we're representing um, and started showing a couple of years ago. And literally everything we get from him sells, uh, and, and most of it sells very quickly. And, and so this follow-up question is, you know, what is it that is, is creating that magic? Uh, and I get this kind of question a lot from artists, uh, artists that I'm working with. Uh, either in the gallery or in comments on on the blog. And it is an understandable question, right? Uh, An artist who is trying to sell uh, her or his artwork, uh, it would be helpful to know what is going to be most sellable. Um, what, uh, you know, what kind of work could I be doing that would find the broadest market appeal? You might even think of it uh, just not in uh, art business terms, but just in broader, uh, in a broader business sense. You might think of it as market research. What is the market uh, interested in? What's what's in demand right now? Uh, what's hot? What are the trends? And um, I'm going to answer this question a little bit carefully um, because uh, it it is, as I say, understandable, but it's also my response to this. I I, I don't want to have undue influence on what artists are are creating or how they are perceiving the the market. Um, You know, and and what I would say, first of all, is that uh, because of of the kind of business we're in, where we're not dealing with huge volumes of of sales, um, you know, we're not selling uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of pieces of art every year where you could come up with some kind of scientific average of what is is uh, the, the most popular and most sellable kind of artwork. Uh, we're, we're in a very niche market. Um, you know, even if you look broadly at all the galleries in the country that, like mine, are focused on commercial sales um, and are selling to kind of the, the what I would call the middle of the market, uh, you're just going to have a very hard time coming up with, with a broad picture like that. And even harder because uh, galleries are not going to, uh, as a general rule, share what they're selling uh, or talk about it. Um, you know, they're going to hold their cards close to their chests and, and uh, understandably, um, you know, if you've got a good thing going, you don't want other people to uh, edge in on it, so to speak. Um, and, and so, you know, from, from that perspective, I, I can't answer the question from uh, a broader perspective, uh, you know, what, what is the most, most popular. But it's even difficult uh, to answer that question from my narrower focus of what I'm selling in the gallery. I mean, I can tell you 
what is selling well for us out of the gallery at this this moment, kind of day to day, and and even week to week and month to month. I I could certainly go through and analyze and look at uh, at which artists are selling the best, and and you know drill in and say, okay, what what sizes and what media are selling the best, what style. Um, but I'm just not sure. And, and not convinced that that kind of information would be all that valuable to you. Um, first of all, it changes with great frequency, um, certainly from one season to the next. I will see um, interest in particular artists waxing and waning. Um, I will see interest in particular media going up and down. Some years we sell bronze sculptures very, very well. We had a, a season um, two or three years ago where we sold a number of large scale, you know, almost monumental sized sculpture uh, at very high price points. Um, and, and of course, um, you have a season like that. And, and so going into the next season, you want to make sure you have plenty of large bronze sculptures available for your clients. And the following season, for us at least, those sales diminished dramatically. Um, and, in, and, and I actually got caught with uh, more uh, sculptural inventory than I could easily uh, handle or have capacity for. And, and, and so even I, uh, in, in my uh, planning from season to season, have challenges answering uh, those questions. Um, and, and it's really important that, uh, you know, obviously I want to pay attention to what's, what's selling well, and I want to try and respond to that. And, and if a particular artist is doing very well, like the, the artist that I mentioned in last week's session, you know, I want to be pushing that artist to get us inventory, to feed that, that demand. Um, but I have to be very careful in doing that, not to lead us into a dead end where we end up, uh, you know, maybe maybe we burn over the market a little bit, um, and and so demand drops off, or maybe interests change, or or maybe you know maybe it's just how the stars align, and who I have walking through my door is going to have an impact on which artists are going to get the the most interest. And then there are a lot of other intangibles. Where where am I displaying a, a particular artist at a certain time of year? I mean, there's just so much, uh, so many variables, and so much serendipity involved. In, in any art sale that it's hard to quantify and, and give and make recommendations to you about where you should be putting your focus. Now, that doesn't mean I don't try, and it also doesn't mean that I'm not suggesting that, um, or, you know, it doesn't mean that I, I don't think you should pay any attention to what's going on in the marketplace. But I, I just hesitate to have an artist try and create work to the market um, rather than instead creating the very best work that that artist can, work that is, uh, you know, that meets that artist's vision, and then go out and, and hustle and work hard to find the marketplace that will accommodate that work and, and where that work will, will find an audience. Um, I, 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 I am really leery of an artist putting the market before the work is, is what I'm trying to say. So having said that, though, um, let's delve in a little bit deeper to each of the, the various um, areas that, uh, that Jeff asked about. Um, and, and explore those because it, it was a great question because it, it drills down into some of the specific things that we might think about. So, so Jeff asks, what's, what's the subject matter? Uh, you know, what, what subject matter is the artist doing that, that is, is so, um, so popular? And, and what I would say is that if I'm making a recommendation to you when you're thinking about subject matter, it would be to look for subjects that will evoke a reaction or an emotional connection. Um, we find that most of the time when buyers are responding to a piece, it's because it's striking a, a chord or creating a, you know, some kind of harmony in them where the, the vision of what they're seeing in that art 
um, touches a memory or an experience that they have had or, or, or even just expresses an emotion that they have felt. It, it creates some kind of resonance there. Um, and, and so, again, and, and I said this last week, I, I was, did not give the name of the artist and get, didn't get specific because the, in my experience, if I were to, to show you images of, you know, uh, a bunch of different pieces that a, a particular artist had done that were selling very, very well for us, and you looked at those works... And you said, you know, I, I could do something like that. that uh, sure, that if, if that's selling well, why don't I adapt and, and create work in, in the same vein? Um, I, I, in my experience, and certainly there are artists who can do that, um, uh, you know, who can, can pick up on a, on a theme or a subject that, uh, that, that, that's out there in, in the world and, and take that and run with it and bring their own expression to it. And I'm not saying copy that, but, but just adapt into it and, and maybe even have some success with it. But by and large, what I've found is that actually what happens is when an artist is, is doing that and putting the market first um, and, and trying to create something that is, quote, sellable, unquote, um, a lot of times they'll miss that, uh, that, that, that element that really is intangible, and that is that spark of creativity and originality and self-expression that is, is so critical in a, a, a great work of art, a work of art that uh, is going to resonate with someone. So when it comes to subject matter, uh, my, my suggestion is what subject matter strikes that chord with you? What, what ideas do you have about subject matter that excite you, that, that uh, you know, that, that make you want to create? And, and I would pursue that. Um, and, and what we, we live in a, in a broad enough marketplace that uh, if you're interested in something and it strikes a chord with you, it's likely going to have that same effect on some segment of the marketplace. And the more consistent you are in your subject matter and, and the, the more, um, you know, the more you're able to tell a story with that subject matter and the, and the, th- the thematic elements that you're working with, the more likely you are to reach that market, um, you know, if, if your work is kind of telling a story, whatever that story is, and it could be, to be clear, it could be abstract work, um, it could be landscape work, it could be figurative, um, and, and the story doesn't have to, you know, be an explicit narrative necessarily. It just has to create a uh, a, a sense of, of narrative that, yes, this artist is saying something and expressing something that I can relate to or, or appreciate. And having that then is going to open doors for galleries to be interested in your work and, and eventually for collectors to, um, you know, hopefully ultimately purchase multiple pieces from you. Um, and, and again, I, I, you're going to say, well, you're not being very specific. What does that mean? Well, well, the reason I can't be specific is because it means something different for every single artist. Um, you know, and you can go to my gallery website, xanadugallery.com, and go to the artists page and click through on some of the artists and, and just just kind of look at their work from the perspective of a collector and, and, you know, trying to be as objective as possible and see if you can discern what, um, you know, what, what, what that particular artist's interests are, what, what's interesting to them in their subject matter, what it is that they're trying to share. Um, and, and not to say that you're going to, uh, you know, pick up on that same interest, but, but just to get a sense of, uh, what it is that they're achieving across the the body of their work that they're sharing through my gallery. Um, the the next question after subject matter was size, and and this one I can be a little bit more practical on, um, and and that is that uh, I encourage my artists to provide as wide a range of different sizes 
as they they comfortably can in a way that allows them still to you know express what they want to express uh, with their work. What's the right size for a piece? Well, the right size for a piece is not necessarily some dimension that's going to allow it to fit above a sofa in a living room or into a niche. Um, rather, it's the size that accommodates your vision for that that work of art. Um, and, and, and then, you know, as you look across your body of work, if you can have a variety of sizes uh, that accommodate uh, your vision, uh, that can be helpful um, and, and effective for showing your work to collectors, whether it's in galleries or, or if you're selling directly. Uh, we found that uh, an artist who has some variety uh, casts a little wider net for for where that work can show. Now, um, having said that, I do have some artists. I have several artists whose range of sizes, based on all those those characteristics that I mentioned, is is fairly small a range. I, I have one artist whose uh, work is all in one format and one size, and uh, she is very consistent in that because her vision is for the um, the, the the work to all hang together in a in a kind of rhythm with with this size. Um, and so for her, she she is doing what I've suggested. I, I'm saying that you should have a range of sizes, but for her, that range is is limited to just one one dimension. Um, and maybe that'll change over time. Maybe she'll try some different sizes. Um, but but I would look at your work, and um, you know you don't want to do anything size wise that that is just not not going to be comfortable for you if you're used to working in. Uh, you know, at a pretty small scale and, and to think that, uh, you know, well, Jason from Xanadu Gallery says I need a range of sizes. So now I'm going to try a, a 48 by 60. And, you know, if that's way outside your range, it's probably going to be difficult for you to adapt to, to that size. But uh, maybe you can bump up one and add one more, you know, one larger dimension that's uh, 15% larger than your current largest piece and just slowly expand out your reach in terms of size, uh, medium, uh, you know, what, what medium sells best. Um, again, uh, I, I would not worry so much about that. I would be looking for a, a medium that allows you from a technical aspect to execute on your vision. And, and for some of you, that's going to be oil painting and watercolor acrylic, uh, you, you know, certainly the most, most popular media, um, for others, it's going to be encaustic or a, a resin or, or a, you know, gouache, a variety of, of different media are available. Um, you know, this is one where you, you probably could do a quick survey of gallery websites and very quickly see that uh, most of the work they are showing is... Uh, you know, in oil, or there's some percentage that's in oil, some percentage that's acrylic, some percentage that's that is watercolor, bronze, etc. Um, and and you probably could get a sense of of what the market is most interested in terms of media. But again, I just be literally, and I have buyers who um, are, are thrilled to bring a new medium into their art collection. Uh, you know, oh, I've never, I've never bought an encaustic before. Tell me about it. What is the process? And and they love learning something new. And so, um, I wouldn't be afraid if you find that uh, your medium is not one of the the most popular. Again, this market is all about uh, creating and and marketing to niches, and you can do that um, no matter you know how how different or out of the mainstream your artwork or medium or, or size is. Um, now, Jeff also asks, what story are the paintings telling? And, and I've already alluded to this a little bit. And, and rather than story, I like to use the word narrative. Um, a, a story is, is uh, you know, uh, makes us think about explicit facts and events and details that um, I feel an artwork doesn't necessarily need to tell. And, and certainly there are some artists who, uh, who are creating almost, uh, you know, kind of almost 
illustrative uh, pieces that that do tell a very specific story. Um, but I I find that uh, for most of my artists, just having a broader narrative. What is it overall that I'm I'm you know trying to convey to my collectors without hitting them over the head with it. Um, and, and, and at the same time, leaving some room for the collector to bring something of their own to the narrative. Um, and a lot of times what I think of it, how I think of it is that the uh, artist creates a kind of framework and a, a, a narrative with a lot of uh, spaces for interpretation and for a collector to, to step in and, and that the viewer, the potential purchaser steps in and fills in those details with their own story. And, and so that, that's kind of, um, a, a lot of times what I find to be a very effective, uh, interplay between, um, the, the, the artist and the, the collector. It, it is good to have a, a narrative those I mentioned, um, you know, and, and again, having some consistency in your work uh, will be very effective. So, so, you know, you really, as an artist, are going to be looking for your own story to tell. And, um, you, you know, across all these various areas, you're going to be looking for your own sense of expression. Um, and, and, and again, you know, if I look at more broadly at my artists who are doing the best, I, I might might be able to effectively tell you that it's those that have a unique perspective who are trying to tell a story that is maybe not a story that's been told before or a narrative that's been given before, that uh, they're looking for unique ways to express things without ex- accepting con- you know, the conventional norms of, of the art world. Um, that works for us, and that's where our focus has been. Now, uh, again, even there, I have to be a little careful because you could go to the gallery next door to mine in Scottsdale, and they are more interested in traditional um, expressions of, of media and subject matter and have very avid collectors, uh, and, and their collectors find the uniqueness even in that traditional, um, you know, more uh, kind, of, kind of more widely... Uh, approached methods of, of creation. And so I'm not, I'm certainly not trying to be coy here and I'm not, not trying to, um, you know, avoid the question or punt the question, but uh, my, my overall opinion of, of, you know, what is it that's the, the most popular and sells the most is that that's really the wrong the wrong question to ask. Uh, you know, I sus- as I as I mentioned earlier, I suspect you probably could. Um, you know, you could you could probably send some uh, stat- statistical students out there and have them work with galleries, and they could probably come up with some averages and uh, figure out what is the on average what is the most desirable piece of artwork. Um, but I suspect that if, if then an artist were to take all that information and set out to create that piece of art that, that those studies showed to be the most desirable, that the piece of art they would create w- would have a very narrow appeal um, and, and probably not be any more successful than, than any other artwork. Because Uh, Unlike so many other aspects of our lives and so many other aspects of the even the the, the things that we consume, you know, artwork really is a person to person communication, a personal interaction that's occurring, a sharing of, of visions and emotions um, and I, I just am not sure that you can or even want to try to engineer your artwork based on that. Um, and, and I'm not saying that it can't be done. And certainly there have been some, some artists who have, have gone more for a, a mass market appeal and, you know, maybe have created prints and jaclays and all kinds of things built on that. And, and certainly happens, but, but that's just not, that's not the market I'm in. And, and most of the artists I meet, that's not what they're interested in pursuing. And so, 
uh, you know, I, I've probably taken, uh, all, uh, you know, taken a good deal of time to basically say, don't pay too much attention to what the market is doing. Uh, when I have artists kind of ask me questions about, you know, what do you want for a show or, or um, you know, what would you like me to be focusing on this season? Uh, I almost always respond uh, I want work that excites you. I want, you know, I want what you're most interested in. Um, you know, I, I can't really give you the answer. And that's not to say that there's not some back and forth and some feedback. And boy, that that one piece you did was was really great. If you did more of, of those kinds of things, you know, if, if that struck your fancy, we might have more customers for it. There, there are conversations like that that occur, certainly. Um, but I just, uh, like I say, I found that whenever I try to get too specific or try to request something that, uh, you know, where I'm almost dictating what the artist is going to create, that almost never works out. So I, I guess to thine own self be true would be my, my, uh, you know, my guiding star as I'm thinking about, uh, what I would recommend you, you create. And as you do that, um, and as you become better and better at expressing your vision and um, sharing what uh, what what most interests you, uh, and then finding the the market where buyers are congregating, um, you, you know that I believe is where you are going to find the most success. So this is a little um, shorter session than we normally do, and I want to keep it keep it simple. I could could probably go on further. But this is a conversation that will be ongoing. And, um, you know, I don't want to say that I'm never going to share any trends that we're seeing, because I think there are some some useful things that you can draw from from those trends. Um, but I, I would, would, would have you coming at that from the direction of saying, I know what I want to create, I know what my vision is, or I'm developing that vision. And anything that I'm seeing in galleries or hearing from other artists or, or from, from people in the market, I'm going to examine that input from the perspective of knowing where I want to be going. And maybe I can incorporate some of it in, but some of it maybe I just have to leave by the wayside because it won't be true to what I'm trying to accomplish. And... That's our podcast for today, a little little shorter than normal, but uh, keep those comments coming, and, and uh, I, I'm particularly interested in hearing what, uh, you, you know, what you have found as you've tried to find your direction and your voice. Have you tried to, um, again, I want to be very careful, obviously not copy other artists, but maybe build on their success and follow their directions? What, what impact has that had on uh, your, the marketability of your work on your sales? Has it, uh, has it been effective or not? Uh, leave those comments in the comments section on the podcast page on red.blog. Uh, if you're listening to this in, in some other venue, uh, be sure and hop over to www.red.blog.com. Uh, go to the podcast section and you'll see the page for this podcast. And I'll look forward to seeing the conversation that develops there. If you haven't signed up for our uh, e- email list, be sure and click on the link in the upper right corner to join that. You'll get notified of future podcasts and you will also uh, receive our newsletter with articles about uh, the art market, about working with galleries, about expanding your marketing. Um, and I will look forward to seeing you in the conversations there. Thanks for joining me for this podcast. We'll see you next time.